The Ravens decided to finally stop trolling us and they dropped the 53 man roster. Let's get straight into it. We ain't wasting no time. At quarterback, Lamar Jackson, Josh Johnson. I know a lot of us wanted to upgrade the backup QB position, but it is what it is. Hopefully, we don't need him anyway. I don't think we will unless the Baltimore Ravens blowing somebody out and they want Lamar Jackson to go take a little rest. Now, uh, Devin Leary, he did get cut. Initially, I thought since the Baltimore Ravens invested a draft pick in him and they don't like cutting draft picks, I thought that he could be QB3. But when that new rule came out, well, actually that old rule, and they was like, hey, if this going to be your QB3, he got to be on a 53-man roster. Oh, that's when we all knew that he was not going to be making the 53-man roster. And they also cut Emory Jones as well. So we'll see which one of them ends up back on the practice squad. At running back, here's where I got my first surprise. Derrick Henry, uh, Justice Hill, Pat Ricard, no shockers there. We all knew that those three were going to make the roster. But Rasheen Ali, I was a bit shocked at that one because – First, we knew Owen Wright. Owen Wright was going to have that spot. That was going to be his. But then when Owen Wright got hurt, then that let Rasheen Ali sort of get that running back three spot by default. But then even still with Rasheen Ali being hurt and him having been out of practice for a little while, I thought the Baltimore Ravens may do a little stash move with him. But the Baltimore Ravens say, no, we're going to roll with it. We're going to see what the young boys got. So they're giving him a shot. Now, here goes where we got our first heartbreak at wide receiver. And a little bit of surprises too, but... Wide receiver, uh, Tylen Wallace, Nelson Aguilar, Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Devontae's Walker. Now, with Tez Walker, you know he was a fourth-round pick. Baltimore Ravens obviously got some high hopes for him because they kept him around despite having a quiet training camp, despite having an extremely quiet preseason. They let him make the roster. I was thinking that this was a possible stash right here as well. I thought both him and Rasheen Ali and then another player we're going to talk about shortly were going to be stashed, but the Baltimore Ravens said, nope, Tez Walker, you are making it. So hopefully he ends up making a big impact on this roster. I said it once the moment he was drafted. 350 yards, even 400, that will be a successful season from him in my eyes. But also, Deontay Hardy, he made it too. And with Deontay Hardy, um, I think with them losing Owen Wright, I think that played a big part in Deontay Hardy making the roster uh, because Owen Wright was somebody that could do multiple things, where he could be a running back and a return man. Tylen Wallace is somebody that could do multiple things, where he can be a wide receiver and a return man, but Deontay Hardy, not saying that he can't be a wide receiver, but they're not going to use him at wide receiver. They're going to use him strictly as a return man. So let's see how it goes. But here's where we got our heartbreak because Dayton Wade did not make the roster. And Dayton Wade was somebody that he had a great preseason. He made his impact. He made his plays. And they were really using him a lot. Um, I really hope they can get him back. But if not, I hope he gets a shot somewhere. He don't need to just be sitting out there. He don't need to be a free agent. He needs to be on somebody's roster ASAP. I really want to see him play this year. I would have loved to see him for the Baltimore Ravens. But if that can't happen, I would love to see him play elsewhere. Now, tight ends. No surprise there. Same three tight ends. Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Kohler. No shockers there. Offensive line. I don't think we really got any shockers here either. Nick Samack, Tyler Linderbaum, Patrick McCary, Ben Cleveland, Roger Rosen, Garden Sala, Andrew Voorhees, Josh Jones, Daniel Filele, and Ronnie Stanley. So no surprises there. Defensive line, uh, Michael Pierce, Justin Matabike, Broderick Washington, Brent Urban, and Travis Jones. No shockers there. Everything is looking like everything. At linebacker, Roquan Smith, Trent Simpson, Malik Harrison, Chris Boyd, Kyle Vinoy, David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson, Adolfe Away. Now, none of those are surprises to me, but one that made it actually is, and that is Adisa Isaac. He was that third person I was talking about, along with Rasheen Ali and Tez Walker. I thought Adisa Isaac could end up being a stash. Simply because the way that he started this season, he had the hamstring issues, and then he got into a game in his first game action, then he ended up getting hurt. Again, John Harbaugh said it was a soft tissue injury, didn't describe exactly what it was, but I was thinking, oh yeah, here we go. This is going to be the classic stash move, but they kept him around, so Ravens been shocking me with some of these moves. Uh, and then at the specialist position, that kicker, punter, long snapper, Justin Tucker, Jordan Stout, Nick Moore, no shockers there, so let's get to the defensive backs. Because this is where things got very, very interesting. Uh, at defensive back, we got Nate Wiggins, Jalen Armour Davis, uh, Brandon Stevens, TJ Tampa Jr., Ardarius Washington, Marlon Humphrey. So those are your cornerbacks. Pepe Williams, he got cut. And I was a bit surprised by that. I know the game against the Packers was rough. But prior to that, 
he was looking a lot better, especially as a blitzer. So I was thinking, oh, yeah, Pepe Williams, this is you. Even though going into this season, especially after the draft, when they drafted both Nate Wiggins and TJ Tampa, I said, ooh, Jalen Alma Davis and Pepe Williams, that pressure is on. And especially with all the time that they had missed due to injuries, that pressure was on more than ever. Speaking of injuries, who made it at the safety position? Because this one got me surprised as well. Kyle Hamilton. Uh, Darius Washington, they got him listed as a safety, but we know he plays safety and corner. Uh, Marcus Williams, Eddie Jackson, both Bo Braid and Sanusi Kane made the rock. When I saw that, I said, whoa, that, that's something right there. They kept both of them. I remember when we first drafted Sanusi Kane, I was like, look, hey, okay, now that, like, that's it's going to be tough for him to make the team because Ravens got a lot of safeties, and we always expected them to add a veteran safety to the mix. So with them, when they added Eddie Jackson, I was like, oh, yeah, for, for, for Sanusi Kane. And then even Bo Bray, too. Him being an undrafted rookie free agent and them already having Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, and they added Eddie Jackson, too. And then they signed Daryl Worley, too. So I was like, oh, these, these young boys, I don't know about that one. But they made it. The Baltimore Ravens saw that talent that they brought. They saw that these two are not afraid of anything, anybody. They're going to be some hard hitters on them kick returns. On them kick and punt returns, you got Sanusi Kane and Bo Braid out there, they're going to knock somebody out. But one of the biggest reasons that they may have actually been kept on this roster is something that I didn't even think about. And this is this goes for Eddie Jackson, this is Darius Washington, and then Sanusi Kane and Bo Braid as well. And somebody brought this up to me in the comment section when we were streaming on Bleacher Report. It was the fact about Marcus Williams, that he just has continued to get hurt. That is their big money safety. He's making a good amount of money. Now, when he plays and when he's healthy, he's really good now. Marcus Williams is really, really good. But he just has not been healthy. Whole career in New Orleans, he was doing his thing over there. He was coming up and he was healthy. He ain't missed no time, but he got to the Baltimore Ravens first. He had missed a boatload of time with injury. It's like, okay, maybe it's just a little fluke, whatever. Well, whatever it is, it is what it is. Then the second year... He came, he playing good, then he missed a boatload of more time with injury again. So, our motto is stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. The Baltimore Ravens said that safety, hey, we're going to keep like 50 of them uh, just in case so we can stay ready so we ain't got to get ready. Team, keep it clean. How you feeling about this Baltimore Ravens 53-man roster? Now, there were still some other moves that the Baltimore Ravens made in order to get down to the 53-man roster, and they are as follows. So, the Ravens players that are on waivers, so guys that are not veterans yet, they ain't been in the league long enough yet, so in order uh, to be released, they have to pass through waivers. If Ravens want to bring them back to the practice squad, they have to clear waivers at first. That means that no other team would put in a claim on them, and then the Ravens can sign them back to their practice squad if they choose to. But the Ravens on wa waivers are the following. Uh, QBs, Devin Leary and Emory Jones. Uh, running back, Chris Collier. Wide receiver, Dayton Wade. Malik Cunningham. Oh, my goodness. I forget about Malik Cunningham. Because he looked good as a wide receiver, in my opinion. He was out there doing his thing, but he's on waivers as well. Uh, tight end, Kadir Ishmael, who it has been said that they want to bring him back to the practice squad. Offensive lineman, Corey Bullock. Uh, Darren Darcourt, Tashawn Manning, Julian Pearl. Linebacker, undrafted rookie free agent, Joe Evans. Who he was doing it that first game, he was all in the backfield. The second game he got a little, a little slow, but then that third game he was he was solid. So but he he goes through waivers. Uh Yandy Rigby, Josh Ross, uh, and defensive lineman CJ Ravenel and defensive backs, Bump Cooper and Pepe Williams. Now on the flip side, there's some players that were released that are veterans. So they don't have to pass through the waiver wire. They can go sign with any team, whenever, wherever. They can do it right now if they want to. And those players are the following. Um, is running back John Kelly, wide receivers Keith Kirkwood and Anthony Miller, uh, defensive tackle De DeAndre Sanat and Josh Tupau, and also defensive backs Kader Holman and Daryl Worley. Man, I, I just really thought Daryl Worley was going to make it for sure, but he obviously didn't. And then there are some unfortunate Ravens that have been placed on season-ending injury reserve, so that means that is a wrap for their year. They are done. They cannot come back. They cannot play unless... Unless, and anybody out there, correct me if I am wrong, but unless the Ravens come up with a, an injury settlement with them and they release them, um, then they can be free to sign with another team and they can end up playing if that's the case. But these players will not be playing for the Ravens this year. Uh, that is running backs Owen Wright. It sucks. Uh, wide receiver Isaiah Washington. Inside linebacker Deion Jennings. Defensive back Christian Matthew. And also defensive back Trayvon Mullen. So that dislocated shoulder. His injuries just... 
Oh, his injuries just stripped him of everything this year. They just stripped him of his opportunity. He was so close, but the injuries, they just ended up making it so far. Now, uh, Ravens on injury reserve with designation to return uh, Arthur Millette. And we all figured that he was going to get that designation. So that's where they can put him on injury reserve before they do the roster cut down. Uh, but it's not the injury reserve that ends his season. It's the one where he can obviously come back from and then still on the physically unable to perform list since he could not pass or even take his physical is running back Keaton Mitchell. So he will be out at least the first four games. We all expect him to be out longer than that. So we'll see how that goes. But Keaton Mitchell, if you want to give us a nice little surprise, hey, don't be scared to. Now, while the Baltimore Ravens took forever to finally drop the roster, y'all never take forever to send in your questions. And this first one came from the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Keontae. He said the following. He said, I'm done playing around with the backup QB talk in the offensive line. I trust with the starters, those guys will be okay. My real concern in Graven is pass rush. I love the guys we have, like Beeks, Broderick Washington, Adolphe Away, and more. But I feel like someone like Yannick or a pesty Shaq Lawson would help not only with keeping our guys fresh, but keeping offensive lines guessing. I would hate for such a great second secondary to look ordinary because we can't get to the QB what are your thoughts my thoughts are I would say give it a game or two um and just see how they're doing see how well they're doing or see how poorly they're doing hopefully we ain't got to talk about how poorly they're doing but my answer to your question would hopefully will hopefully be David Ajabo and the Dolphin way too but David Ajabo David Ajabo is ready man he just if he stays healthy we're good to go. Uh, he also said, the Chiefs just released Justin Ross. Hopefully, we go and get him. That's a big, deep threat. So, um, yeah, the Baltimore Ravens, when it comes to wide receiver, they got plenty of options of guys that are out there on the open market. Uh, you got plenty of guys that you could trade for, but if you want to go the free agent route, which you normally do typically take, then, yeah, you got plenty of options. Next question came from my guy Martin, who is also a Team Keep It Clean patron. It was him. He said, the other day I sent a comment about trading for Noah Brown or Robert Woods from the Texas. Yeah, it was you. It was you. I could not remember the other day who it was, but it was you. And then, boom, Noah Brown got released. So we'll, they wouldn't even have to trade for him. But anyway, he said, I feel like these guys will make our team much better, especially Noah Brown, because he is a bigger receiver. He is 6'2". I like bigger receivers that can go up and get it. But Noah Brown also has speed. My thought process with this trade is that he could actually start for us. I think he is just as good as Bateman. And I've been in, all the way in on Bateman till this latest injury. You can't count on Bateman staying healthy the whole year. And if you could get both Noah Brown and Robert Woods in a trade, that would make the roster that much better. The Texans have like seven wide receivers that would start on any other team. I'm trying to poach one of them, LOL. Noah Brown had two games last year. We had 153 and 172 yards. But because there's so much in front of him, he doesn't get the opportunity. Like, I feel like he would be here. His ceiling here, in my opinion, is as a number two wide receiver. Ooh. Yeah, hey, that man, he produced. I think last year he had like, like 500-something yards. And he wasn't the number one option. But he's somebody that obviously showed that, hey, when you call him, he'll pick up. So if Ravens want to make that call, hey, maybe he'll pick up. Uh, so he said, hold up. I just read the Texans are releasing Noah Brown. EDC, call this man's agent. Get him on the team now. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, what up to you and all the viewers? So today was cut day and the Arizona Cardinals released Desmond Ritter. In my opinion, I think he would be a better backup for our team and Josh Johnson. He has youth, athleticism, starting experience, and his traits are more comparable to Lamar Jackson's. Oh, you mean then Josh Johnson. Oh, okay. Because... Mm. Anyway, he said, I think it would be a better transition for the team in general to continue to play the way as if Lamar was still in. God forbid anything happens to Lamar. What's your opinion on this? Practice squad couldn't hurt. Yeah, pra practice squad couldn't hurt. You ain't got to put him on the active roster. You can put him on a practice squad, see how he develops, see how he grows, see how he adjusts to things, and then go from there. 